All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys my tricks that help me pop my backside flips. So be able to get onto things, but also over things, and also get your backside flips a lot more consistent. So this goes kind of without being said, obviously you need to build to backside 180, and you need to build to kick flip in order to do this. If you can't backside flip and it's kind of out of the reach, stick around because I'm going to show you some tips on how to backside 180 and also some kick flip tips before we get into the backside flip. So, so back 180 is I, I like to have my feet like kind of more in the middle of the board and it really varies like like don't be shy to play around with the positioning of here to here. So basically when I say that because like if your tail is like quite steep or you have like a lot of fingers of flat it's going to vary depending where your feet. If it's more comfortable put it on the tip that's chill or more here it's it's all good but you want to try and avoid the pockets because that's what's going to make the board tilt and you don't want to make the board tilt you want to keep it straight under you start with some back ones and uh that'll help you kind of warm up into the back side so whether like you pop it and then like turn it in the air or if you land pivot it or if you just like land and then like basically power side the rest. It, it doesn't really matter as long as you're like getting a good pop to begin with. And you're also kind of turning your shoulders right before you pop. So I'll show you what I mean. Right before I pop, I'm like turning. Kickflips are next. Yeah, where do I start with kickflips? <laughs> I tend to try and put my feet kind of right below the, the these bolts here. Sometimes even like, I'll, I'll even hog a little bit of the bolts. And it really depends on what the application is. Like if I'm just doing it on flat, it tends to be like kind of right on those bottom bolts. But if I'm trying to do it over something, I tend to put my feet a little lower. It, it's a timing thing, right? So the lower your feet are, the slower the timing. And when you want to slow the timing, it's because you're trying to get over something because you want to pop and then flick. But if you're trying to, you know, like let's say you're trying to do it into like a, a manual or something, you might want to have a quicker flick. So you want to be closer to the nose. So the closer to the nose, the quicker the flick is, whereas the further away from the nose, the slower the flick is. That's kind of how I try to think about it. So rifle off some kick flips and then, then get into backside flips. So other than obviously the foot positioning, play around with like angles. Some people, it helps if like your foot's more like, kind of like that. I tend to like more of an angle because it helps me aim my flick. I tend to like try and aim for like this part of the board here. You can see where, where I'm flicking. It's kind of in that area. I'm goofy. Obviously it's going to be on that side if you're regular, but basically that's where I'm trying to aim. And I'm also trying to like stay pretty centered over my board and trying to like apply pressure in both my feet before I pop. So. I'm like trying to stay centered. I'm also kind of like a little bit open, kind of looking a bit that way, but focused on my feet. So I focus really on clicking the tail first. That's the most important thing, click the tail. And then after you've popped, then once you've kind of leveled out, then you can aim the flick. So aim where you want it to flick. <laughs> it's hard not moving. Okay, let's get into the backside flip. So basically, we're gonna apply what we learned from the backside 180 and the kick flip and try and combine the two. So the way I like to think about this, really try and think about breaking, breaking it up in steps in your mind, right? When you think of a trick, you think of like the first thing, which is your foot positioning. Then think about where your, your, your body weight is. And then you think about clicking the tail and then flicking. That's kind of how I'm breaking it down. So basically, I'm gonna worry about my foot positioning. So I'm gonna put it where I feel comfortable on the tail which is roughly around kind of like in this middle area. And then I'm gonna place my front foot just like a kickflip. You don't wanna try and alter away from where you'd put your feet for a kickflip. So apply the same thing you learned from kickflip and backside 180. And the next thing is body weight. So basically right before I snap, right before I click my tail, I'm gonna be turning around and facing the direction that I wanna go. And what that does, it leads the body to where it goes. So just like driving a car, just like skating wherever you look your shoulders will follow and where your shoulders follow your body follows your hips will follow so that's essentially what we're going to do we're going to do some do some backside flips <laughs> Ooh, 
looks so good. Another one. So another thing, if you want to take the backside flip to another level, you could do it over stuff, which would change your foot positioning slightly depending on how high the obstacle is. But you can also change the way the backside flip looks. So if we're doing a regular backside flip, like I said, you want to try and flick off the end here, just like a kick flip. But if you're trying to like make it fold over itself, almost like forward flip looking, where it kind of like flips like, like that, that's when you would then aim your front foot to more of like the middle of the board. So we'll try and get one of those to see what that looks like to compare the two. And then we'll do it over something and onto something. And I'll show you the different foot positioning for that. That was it. That was it. I'll take that. I don't normally do them that way. Sometimes they'll like do it that way by accident, but it doesn't like come naturally to do it that way. But food for thought, if you're trying to do it that way, could be cool. Okay, let's take it over something. So when you're trying to do it over something, like I mentioned earlier, you wanna put your foot a little lower, right? Cause the timing changes. So we're gonna do it over this one board. Realistically, I wouldn't change my foot positioning for something that high, but for something like a lot higher, I would put my foot a little lower to try and get let's over get, it. Get more room to flick. Exactly, more room to flick. And it gives you that timing. So basically you can pop and then flick. So the same thing applies for doing it up something, right? Like depending on how high it is, you want to adjust your feet a little bit. So we're doing up this curb. It's not that high. So I'm really just going to keep my foot in the same positions just for a kick flip. I think I've hit my, uh, backside flip quota for the day. That being said, I think it's very important to practice them. So what I do, what I did for kickflips at least to get better at them is that like I made it a point that every session I would try like at least like 10 to 20. And you should try the same thing for backside flips. You're trying to learn them. Just like make it a thing that every time you go to the skate park, you do like five to 10 backside one ADs, five to 10 kickflips, and then try like about 10 backside flips. And if they're not clicking that day, if they're not working that day, put them aside, do something else. And if they're working, maybe do some more. I find that's the best way to like progress and get better at a trick is really just consistency. So practice them every time you skate. Hope you guys got something out of this video. Hope you're, you learned something from it. Cause like, this is what really helped me with my backside flips. And if there's anything that I missed out or any tips that you thought that like, that worked for you, put it down below. Cause it's gonna help other people who are watching this video. That's it. Take it easy guys.